We've all seen those commercials on television, lawyers advertising, getting an accident, cutting a car accident. Call us, attorney versus attorney. And for the world, I guess it's sensible that a person who boils themselves with hot liquid would win an outrageous lawsuit. But the question lies, what about the Christian? What is the Christian supposed to do with lawsuits when wrong has been done to them or they have done wrong? Is there a biblical stance on what to do and what not to do as far as the law? And there is. And now, this comes from many times I've heard where a Christian is taking a Christian to court, a lawsuit. A Christian is taking a church. A church is taking a Christian. Half the church is taking the half the church. Deacons are taking the pastor, and the pastor is taking and just multiple lawsuits and court cases involving Christians. To the fault and false testimony. Of our Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Matthew 18:15 up on the screen. Moreover, if thy brother, okay, saved. What about a lost man in him? We're not going to deal with that. We're talking about two brothers, two sisters in the Lord. A brother and a sister in the Lord. Or even your own family. More if, the, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. He's crossed the line. So what trespass me. You've seen the fence. Here's a fence and it says no trespassing. Trespassing is when you're going on the other side of the fence. So there's been some kind of of trespass, some kind of suit, some kind of case. Use those words for this study. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. I stress thee alone. So, let's say for instance, Tim has done Tom wrong. Tom is to go to Tim alone and say, Brother, X, Y, Z. Whatever it is. Nobody else. Don't get a gang. Don't get a lich mob. Don't get attorneys. Don't get your friends. Don't get the pastor. You know, I was in a church and the pastor come up to me and said, Well, you know, a lot of people complain to the pastor about me. I heard such and such about. I said, "Do you acknowledge what that person said?" He goes, "Yeah." I said, "Well, let me tell you something, Pastor. Before we go any further, that person did not come to me personally." Oh, uh, uh, no! There is no uh, 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 uh. The Bible says. If a brother has a fault against a brother, you don't go to the pastor. You go to the brother that's at fault. And I told that pastor, I ain't going nowhere more with this, this talk. I told him, I said, there have been people in this church I've had faults with. And I went to them personally, nobody else. Well, I was kind of narrow-minded. No, it's not narrow-minded. We're going to do it a biblical way. And it's a shame to you that you didn't tell them. You go talk to Styler. Okay? You have a fault. You go to the brother. The person that offended you. If he shall hear thee, he listens to you. Thou hast gained thy brother. Listen, Tim. You know what you said? Or, you know... You remember, I gave you $10. 
or whatever it was, you haven't paid me back yet. Oh, Tom, I, I, take that, he paid. Me. Because you know, you know, Tom, listen, I don't have it. Here's a slip of paper. I can owe Tom ten dollars. Or listen, I am sorry. I did not mean. You know what? You you gain an everlasting friendship between two brothers. Because you didn't go outside. You kept it between you two. A lot of times, hopefully, if you got the right spirit. Now one thing before we go to verse 16 is, if the person does not listen to you, leading cause would be that there is sin. There is ungodliness involved. So if he doesn't hear you, verse 16, but if he will not hear you, he won't, no, I don't know, no, 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 I didn't know, uh -oh, you're wrong, uh -oh. then take with thee one or two more. Didn't say the pastor yet. He didn't listen to you in verse 15. Verse 16 didn't say call a lawyer. Get one or two. He said, who would you choose? Well, if you're going to go for two, I would choose somebody that would be know him and somebody who knows you. If I were to choose one, I would choose someone who would be faithful enough to judge between the two of you. That maybe if you are wrong, that one or two would say, hey, you know what, Tom, you're the one that's wrong. Tim is right. But see, somebody would go get the one or two that would take their side. Because, you know, in most cases where there is wrong, the wrongdoer is going to look for more people to keep on doing the wrong. So you get one or two. That the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be said. Right now you need a witness. It didn't work you and him together. Now you get one or two and say, listen, Tim, you you done me wrong. I brought Fred and, and Eric here. And we both know Fred and Eric. We're both friends with them. And as I explained to you before, this is the situation. Now, either or again. Because, oh, okay, you know what? I thought about it. And you know what? I was wrong. I thought I was right, but I was wrong. Or you could say, you know what, Tom? I don't care who you bring. You're wrong. Now let me tell you, 15, 16, and 17 must be done in prayer. Prayer before, prayer during, prayer during, prayer doing, prayer doing. Always in prayer. Because you could be wrong, Tom. You know what, Tom? It may not have been Tim. <laughs> How about that one? Tom, you could be right. There's a there's a wrong cause, but it's not Tim. It was somebody else. All right. So Tim won't listen. Twice. Verse 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them. Notice to hear them. So the one or two witnesses is somebody who knows what happened between Tom and Tim and between Tim and Tom? You don't draw out just any people you want. Witnesses is somebody who establishes the word by they witnessed what happened. And I wanted to say that till we got to this verse.
Because maybe when you go to I forget, Eric and Fred, I think it was. Maybe they would say, Tom, you know what? Yeah, I remember that. I don't think it was Tim. See, your witnesses would not let you get any further. Or if the witnesses say, yep, yeah, I remember when, when Tim did, or when you did to Tim. So now Tim would be, here are two people that saw the event that Tom has brought up. If he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Now you go to the pastor. And now you don't take it to the pastor itself. I've never seen this practice in any church I've been in. Any Baptist church, I've never seen this practice. They always go straight to the pastor. Every single cause. I have gone to the people involved. I never buy stuff and go right to the, go right to the pastor. The church will. And the pastor, there's a problem between Tim and Tom. Tom and Tim. And the church is not just a pastor, it's a church. We got to bring this before the assembly of the church. And we need the church to hear Tom's side. We need the church to hear Tim's side. The church needs to hear the witnesses of Fred and Eric. This is your courtroom. We're going to see this in a moment. Then the church needs to decide, not by voting, the church needs to decide, okay, who's guilty and who's innocent. We'll see that in a moment. But if he neglects to hear the church. Now that could be two outcomes. In other words, I ain't going before the church. I'm leaving this church. I'm going to go somewhere else. And bad enough, another church will take him. Or Tim and Tom have been put before the brethren of the church. Their church, which they are a member of. It's not in the hands of the pastor. It's in the hands of the church. They hear Tim and Tom. They hear Eric and Fred. And the church, let's say for instance, Tim, you owe 10 bucks. And Tim says, no, I don't. Who do you think you are? I'm not going to. If he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen, an unsaved man, and a publican. And the publican back then, they're just. Okay. That's the suit of Jesus. And look at verse 20 that everybody quotes. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So Tim and Tom, when you first come together over a fall, pray over it. In the name of Jesus, and Jesus will be there. And Jesus will reveal to who the guilty party is. But, I mean, if someone's ungodly and don't want to admit, then you got a problem. Then you go through the, two, the, the witnesses, then the church. And you're doing it in prayer, and you're doing it in the name of Jesus. I think the pastor would say, okay, we call the church here, we got... We got an issue between Tom and Tim, which I've never seen happen. Let us pray. Okay, we've heard Tim and Tom. We've heard Fred and Eric. Let us pray. 
That's something that doesn't happen in a worldly courtroom. Now, 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians 6. The Apostle Paul writing to the churches, a carnal church. Dare any of you having a matter against another, saved and saved, brother and brother, sister and sister, brother and sister, sister and brother, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? That's exactly what Jesus said. You are going to take your case between each of you, say, and you're going to possibly go before a judge who's unsaved and unjust, not right, maybe takes bribes, but rather go before the saints. What's the saints? That's where Jesus said, hey, if you won't listen to Fred and Eric, you go before the church. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? We will. And if the world shall be judged by you, and it will be, are you not worthy to judge the smallest matters? Ten bucks? I gave my car to Tom and he broke the car. liabilities things that are not going to affect the eternal life they're just a material life knowing not that we shall judge angels we will how much more things that pertain to the life money goods whatever it is that would bring you to a courtroom if then ye have judgment of things that pertain to this life Set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Not the pastor, not the deacons. Find somebody who's really nobody in your church. Ooh, that'd be insulting today. They would probably be your elderly people. They, they come to church, they sit in the pew, you know? But they're the ones that live life. They're the ones that testimony of life. They've lived the longest. They're old. I mean, they can't go door knocking. They can't do this. But they're members of the church. Don't get somebody popular. Get someone's least esteem in the church. That one, you know, he stays to himself. He's not, he's not unsaved. He's not worldly. He's not unca He just, you know, wants to keep to the shy one. I speak to your shame. Is it so? There's not a wise man among you? Yeah, instead of going to a worldly court, worldly judge, worldly lawyer, you can't find somebody Jesus said, take one or two. You see how Paul is backing Jesus? You can't say G what Jesus said. But that's out of context because Paul's in context. No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. So evidently in the Corinth church, Paul's got word. There are brethren suing brethren. In a worldly court, and Paul's Paul's addressing it. There's nobody in that church of Corinth that's least esteemed. There's nobody in that church of Corinth that's wise enough to say innocent or guilty. There's nobody in that church that will pray over the matter. Not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Saved people. But brother goeth to law with brother that 
before the unbelievers. The judges, the court system, the lawyers, the attorneys, they're not saved. And there are, there are very few. All right, you get yourself a saved lawyer. Chances are the judge that's sitting on that bench is not saved. The chance of that jury, they're not saved. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you. Paul says if you go to court between brother and brother, sister and sister, right side of the church, left side of the church, pastor in the church, the church and the pastor, the deacons and the pastor, the pastor and the deacons, you are at fault. Because you go to law one with another. We're not under the law, we're under grace. And yet you're going to a law court. Why do you not rather take the wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? Now, Paul said, let's say Tim owed Tom ten bucks. Very little amount. But let's say, all right, a lot of small claim court today of $5,000. Tim owed Tom $5,000. Paul says, you know what, Tim? Excuse me, Tom. You know what? Just write it off. If it has to get to the point that you got to go before unbelievers and ruin and soil the name of Jesus. Oh, you know that current church over there? You know they're taking each other to court? Ha, ha, ha. That makes the news. How many churches have been in the news, have been at the talk at the barber shop, have been talking at the grocery store? Did you hear that church? They're going to court against their you know, congregation. Instead of letting it get that far, just, you know what? God, I don't want to soil your name. God, it, it's a lot of money. I'll show you in a moment. Okay. Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Even still, you still go to court. Because you got the right. You got it coming to you. Paul says you're wrong. You're wrong. Take the law. Well, this church is against this half of the church. Then split and go start your own church. Well, we don't like the pastor what he's doing. All right, leave the church and go start your own church and get the pastor you want. Well, the pastor don't like what the congregation. All right, pastor, resign your position at that church and go somewhere else and let them get a pastor. But if you're going to fight it out, you're going to duke it out, you're going to get lawyers, you're going before a jury, you're going before a judge. Even if you won, Paul says you do wrong and defraud. Now, Romans 12. Well, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose, Romans 12. 19. How about this verse? This verse, this verse is widely, widely misquoted. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it's written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Say, not, not in mischief, say, Lord, Tim owed me $5,000. And I'm telling you, Lord, that that's a lot of money. But I don't want to... He doesn't want to go before the church. He wouldn't listen to my witnesses. And he said, if you're going to do it, take it to court. I don't want to take it to court, Lord. I don't want to ruin your testimony. I don't want to ruin our church. I don't even want to ruin Tim. He's my brother. Or we're going to put it all in your hands. I 
and then you let God take care of it. Exodus 21. Exodus 21. 18. If men strive together fighting, and one smite another with a stone, oh, it got bad. Or with his fist, they get in a fist fight. And he die not, but keepeth his bed. In other words, he's been injured. He needs to call 1 800 Lawyers versus Lawyers. We'll get you the money, do you? If he rise again, he gets up out of his bed, he's able, and walk abroad on his staff, he's able to get about. Then, then shall he that smote him be quit. If he smote him and he gets up and he's walking around and all that, he doesn't pay a million dollars and the lawyer doesn't get six million. Oh, uh, uh, I burned myself on, 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 on hot liquid. Are you walking about? Are you? Yeah, I'm getting about. Okay, that's it. But I want a million dollars. That's not Bible. He shall pay for the loss of his time. Alright? Let's say he lost one week's pay for being in his bed, in the hospital, whatever it was. And he got 40 hours. The one that hit him, the one that put him in the bed, pays for his 40 hours. Not 40 and a half, not 42, not 40 times 40 million. And shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. In other words, if that man needed medicine for the injury for the rest of his life, he's responsible for paying the medicine. If he has to go to a chiropractor for his injuries, the one that hit him pays for the chiropractor. You don't pay for him to go on luxury cruises. And if he has to get another job, he gets another job. And you pay for the time that he's out of work, looking for another job. You don't make a fortune. Listen, I'm telling you right now, that these lawyers, and, and these they, they aggravate me, these commercials, and they're on buses. You're going to stand before God one day. You, all that excess of money, $400 an hour, you're going to stand before God one day. You're going to be guilty. You pay for the wound that you cause. You don't pay for the luxury. You don't turn that wound into a fortune. Deuteronomy 17. I got one verse I'm thinking about. I'm going to have to search it. Deuteronomy 17, verse 8. Now, here is your, your state courts and, and Supreme Court. If there rise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, murder, death, between plea and plea, between stroke and stroke, you hit me, he hit you. Being matters of controversy within thy gates. You know, you got an argument. Then shalt thou arise and get thee to the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. For the Jews it was Jerusalem. Thou shalt come unto the priests and Levites, they were the judges, unto the judges that shall be in those days, inquire. And they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. Where did you get your word of sentence? In the law courts? Came out of the King James Bible. Thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they in that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they informed thee. You know, there was no room in the law of Moses for appeals. 
when you went to Jerusalem. When they went to Jerusalem, the Levites would pray before Jehovah. According to the sense of the law which they shall teach thee, according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence. I want probation. It's a first offense. I play football. I'm an actor. To the right hand or the left hand, no matter who you are and what you are. And the man that will do presumptuously will not hearken unto the priest, that's the judge, that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall death penalty if you won't listen to the judges. And shall put away evil from Israel. All the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumption. When you put that man to, to execution, because he won't do what the judges said in the, in the court. That's to make the people say, oh, well, I've got to go to court. I better do what they tell me. God was serious about the judges. God was serious about the law. Now, here's another thing. i got to look this one up. So it was just a few minutes ago. All right, here's another law. Here's another lawsuit that happened. You just uh, Exodus twenty-two fourteen. Make sure I don't want to Twenty-two fourteen. If a man borrow uh, of his neighbor, lawnmower, wheelbarrow, garden hose, whatever you borrow from your neighbor, car, and it be hurt. You borrow his lawnmower and the wheel fell off. You you borrow his car and it dies. The owner there of uh, being not with it. So in other words, let's say Tom borrows Tim's car. We'll put Tom in trouble. Tom's going to run down the road in Tim's car for whatever reason. Tom's car he didn't have. But he's going down the road in Tim's car. And Tim's car breaks. And dies. Now, if it's an animal, which is talking about right here, an animal, if it be hurt, if, if he's got his, his, his ass, and he's going to use his ass to, to do some heavy hauling, and the ass dies, like the car died, the owner's not there. Tim is not with it. He shall surely make it good. Tim? Yes, Tom? Uh, you know, I borrowed your car. Yeah. I had to get a tow truck and bring it to the auto mechanic. It, it died inside the road. Well, what about it? Whatever the auto mechanic says it's going to cost to fix it, I'll pay for it, and then you can pick it up when it's ready. Where, you know... Give some Jewish names. Uh, to think. Benjamin has, for whatever reason, borrowed Abraham's cow or ox. He needs an extra ox. And he takes an ox out in the field and he's plowing and Abraham's not there. And the ox dies. Or let's say the ox is injured because it stumbled on a rock or something. Benjamin is liable for that ox. Whether healing or replacement. Now, do you remember the man that was punched and, and put in the hospital bed? He was 
taken care of for his healing, for his hours. Now, if that animal or the car died or was hurt, and the owner's not there, you make it good. You don't make it a luxury. He don't get a million dollars and the lawyer gets 20 million. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a car for a car, an ass for an ass. Now, verse 15. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be a higher thing, it came for his hire. So in other words, you're in your yard, Tim, and you ask Tom to help you cut down trees, and Tom brings his chainsaw over. Tim and Tom are out there cutting and, 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 and axing trees. Tom's chainsaw breaks down. That has nothing to do with Tim. Because the owner's there. Now, if Tom would come over, hey, Tim, how you doing? Are you going to clear out those? Well, here's my brand new chainsaw. Never been used. I got to go to park store. I got some other errands. I got to run for my wife today. But go ahead and when you're done with it, just put it in my garage. Tim picks up the chainsaw. He's whacking and cutting and the chainsaw breaks. Tom's not there. Tim brings it to the, to the mechanic, gets it fixed and pays for it. Now, if Tom comes over with the chainsaw or any thing of his, and while Tom is using it, it breaks down. It's, now, Tim can offer and say, hey, buddy, listen, I know you're helping me out. I'll pay half. Okay? But the liability of the law never, never, never of 66 books in the Bible Never does it say you're to make a million dollars out of it. You're not to make it a cash cow. If you've been injured, everything to do with that injury, hours that you worked or would have worked, and the physicians and the medications you pay, you don't get a million dollars. And if you got two Christian brethren or the church, or the pastor, or the deacon. And there is a, let's say there's, there's an actual liable case between two or many. Paul says it is foolish. It is wrong. It is at fault. It is shameful for you to go before a law court that's unsafe. Take it in the church. You say, well, Finally, what about we have a church issue? But if we take it to the church, half the church thinks they're right, half the church thinks they're wrong. Well, your pastor knows another church. Let me give that pastor to that church a call. Let me ask if that church will go to that church and ask them. It'll be unbiased. Right? I hope this helps you. I know we want to get that, that quick rich screen. Quick rich. The Bible says no. And the Bible's going to judge these lawyers guilty one day. I can't imagine. I've, had, I've been forced to deal with lawyers. when my wife died of cancer. I had to pay a lawyer $400 an hour. Well, let me tell you, there's no one, no one is worth $400 an hour. You want $400 an hour, not only are you going to do some 
complicated paperwork. You're going to come and clean my house and cut my lawn for $400 an hour. You may be shamming the people. You wait till you stand before God one day. 